Hi everyone, it's Loretta Friedrich here from the creative, uh, I'm the creative director of the Your Food Story Project and author of Your Canadian Food Story, Nourishing Stories and Recipes from Across Canada. There are 113 contributors in this book and 110 recipes from those contributors. I am so excited to be able to introduce to you another contributor from the book, and her name is Nikki Stadnik. Hi, Nikki. Hello. How are you doing today? I am good, thank you. Good. So exciting to have you here, and it's just such a pleasure to be able to, um, you know, talk to people who have been I almost like I feel like I, I well I do know them in a lot of ways because I've I've been holding their stories close to me and they just really feel like family. So we're going to hear from Nikki here and it's it's um, to have you get to know her a little bit better and um, just just really focus in on what makes this project so special. So. Nikki, um, why don't you tell everybody where you currently live, um, you know, what community you're part of, and you know, really, why would we even want to go and visit there? So I am from Medicine Hat, Alberta, southern Alberta, very, it's not a small town, but it's a smaller city. Um, it is a farming community Um yeah, it's, it's just a, it's a very nice community and um, I've lived here for 20 years. I grew up not far from here and um, yeah, lived elsewhere for a little bit and then settled here. Okay, so you've been in that neighborhood for quite a while and I happen to know a little bit about your your neighborhood. I haven't been there for a while. And when I say neighborhood, like the area, because I'm an Albertan myself. And when you talk about um, growing up not far from where you are, tell everybody, were you, uh, did you grow up in like an acreage or a smaller town outside of out, out where you are? I grew up in a very small town. It was called Rolling Hills, Alberta. It still exists, it's still there. Um, there, at the time I grew up there, there was about a hundred people in the town. Um, and again, farming community, but community. So when there was a wedding shower, a baby shower, or any event, when I grew up, there was, um, any wedding was an open house and dance. So it was a chance for the whole community to come together and visit and have a good time. It didn't matter if you were invited to the wedding or not. You were always welcome to come. Um, it was just that, that community atmosphere and everybody looked out for everyone. Nobody was worried about crime or um, what was going to happen to your possessions. It was just community. Everybody had their own garden. Um, town was a half hour away so to go into into Brooks to get your major grocery shop so that happened you know maybe maybe once a week um sometimes a little bit less than that so yeah it it was just a a small small town Rolling Hills was a great place to grow up love it I I love it and I know that um I've got the book here and I could have cheated and and said yes Rolling Hills Alberta is where the story that you submitted takes place, your yeah. food story. And your story, her story, Nikki's story, is on page 236 of, of the book here. And then there's a recipe on page 237 for pickles. Yeah. And these pickles, I know, are pretty special. And, and you know, everybody can read the story. But why not um, tell us, what drew you to, to actually submit this story? And then maybe even also answer this question. What drew you to be part of this project as a whole? So first to submit that story, pickles was something we had at every single meal. And when I talked about these open house and dances and any community event, it was always mom's pickles that mom always brought pickles to these events. That was her contribution. She would bring a few jars and, um, even after my mom passed, um, some of the members, the older members of the community are like, yeah, we're going to miss your mom's pickles. I'm like, well, 
I still have the recipe. It still exists. <laughs> you know, it's still there. Um, but it was, it was always a part of every, every meal, every event. It was just Moss Goob's pickles. It's just the way it was. Um, and then to be a part of this, this project, it, it's such a different project. It's not, it's not a recipe book. It's, there's stories that come with each and every recipe. It's, it's culture. It's, um, every meal should be an event, not just, you know, a fast food drive through. It should, it should be an event. It should be something that's cherished and a way to connect with families. And, you know, it's just the way I see it should be. And that's what you've created in this book in that it's, it is about that culture and how everybody has a food story. Indeed, indeed. And there is that larger um, overarching, I, I call it food story, because, we, you know, when we think about um, all of these food memories that we have and food experiences, not everyone will we be able to articulate or or have you know some sort of story out of it, but collectively, like all of these stories that we have gathered throughout our lifetime, they are mm. that one larger food story, but just that one experience and that one food story from that experience that you've shared in this book is is just enough in itself. Never mind having a sample throughout um, all of Canada and us coming together, like you say, wow. and really um, nourishing us. And it's not about necessarily the food itself. You've used the term community a number of times. And I know your mom, your dear mom has already passed. And, you know, there, it's about legacy and it's about family and all kinds of themes. And that's really, really what is so important for people to realize that that is so nourishing. So I am just beyond excited and so happy that there are so many people like you, Nikki, that have come on, on, on board and we're all in it together and it just happened so naturally. And, and I can feel your heart and, and your love and, and uh, you're honoring your mom and you're honoring yourself by sharing. And when you um, take a look at, you know, any food experiences and for the most part, I know this might be a little tricky to answer, but when you look at the senses, like taste, touch, smell, et cetera, what could you say would be a, a sense that would draw you into um, a particular food, like a meal, or takes you back and go, that was really what triggered that memory? Any sense comes to you? So I will take this from my kids' perspective when they come home um, or there's any big event, say Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever, and they're coming home, they expect it to be um, a family event. They expect it to be everybody coming together and having food. It's, it's not the taste. It's not the smell. It's not, it's not any of that. It's that feeling for them. It's that feeling of belonging and that it's, it's not just, you know, our little family, it's extended. Like I'm the youngest of seven. So when we have family events, <laughs> it's, it's a big event. It's a big event, but it's always that, that feeling of community. That would be first. The next would be not necessarily a taste or a flavor. I think it's more of the tradition that, that, tradition of yeah we always have pickles there's always going to be cabbage rolls there's always going to be pierogies those are just like standard like it'd be meat and potatoes that would be standard at any of our events and any of our family gatherings that's always going to be there it's not going to be anything different um does that answer your question i'm not sure it i think absolutely I does yeah. because what I'm getting from that beyond like, oh, let's just compartmentalize and, and pick a sense. Um, it's, it's beyond those senses in that, but yet it's all of them because you can't even 
it really one can't really explain what that would would actually feel like or be like because it's everything all combined and that's what's so nourishing and whether or not you know you've got a large gathering you've got lots of people you've got loved ones that you're sharing um, a, an important meal and your own children are are identifying that and that's that that piece that keeps going forward beyond yourself when you know you your past and then your yeah. children are, are uh with their families so i love it i love it um now let's switch gears here a little bit and talk about some other passions you're 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 giving me a lot of really emotional triggers here with everything you you've said and i'm sure that there's other things that you can say that will um draw us in and, and is of interest like uh, any projects you work on, your professions, anything like that? So I am a certified holistic nutritional consultant. And, you know, the most part of my, the biggest part of my job is helping people switch from the processed food that everybody seems to gravitate to because it tastes so good. Um, but moving from that and to eat more nourishing whole foods, um, it is absolutely my passion. Um, I love working with people and helping them see how these whole foods are going to nourish their body, um, their body, mind, and soul. Like it's, it's so much more important than just get a quick meal and move on to our next event, just to stop and slow down and eat and enjoy what's there. Um, that's, you know, what I do for a living. Um, I enjoy it. I thoroughly enjoy it. I can't imagine doing anything else. I love it. And, and um, I know a little bit about you. I, well, I, I, I know quite a few people now because of this book. Uh, I've done my homework. Um, so any links you could share with us, any social media channels um, that you could just um, give us? You can find me at um, Nikki's Nutrition on Facebook. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at Nikki Stadnik Nutrition. And you can find me on my website and that's my virtual nutritionist.com. Great. Great. And you and I have some similarities with being in the uh, same profession and, and it's really interesting um, to be talking to somebody who has that same philosophy and yet is broadened because we both know, and that's why I did this book too, is that, well, you know, there's the whole foods and there's some of this conversation about, you know, get back into the kitchen and be um, really enjoying your food and, 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 and paying attention to what you're eating. There is, like you say, the pierogies and things like that. And some might say, well, where does that all fit? It's that nourishing piece of the love. And if you're, I say, building it from scratch, then you're going to be actually seeing what is um, – um, the ingredients that are part of it and adding your love as you're going along. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not necessarily um, about, you know, what, and I speak to this in the book about what we would label and not you and me necessarily, but the world would label as healthy or not. It's yeah. that nourishing part that is so important. Yeah. And I know you and I share that as, 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 as a value. So there's there's well, a big difference between, you know, grabbing a package of pierogies from McCain and making them from scratch at home. Exactly. Exactly. Because you're there's so many layers involved, not only just the ingredients, but everything that we're paying attention to. And we're saluting our heritage. We're saluting our ancestral, like our food legacy, etc. So that is so huge. And that's something that is, is part of um, what is important in this book. And so... Speaking of the book here, um, this book is available on Amazon and you'll be able to find uh, a link somewhere here in this, uh, in this website to that where you can type in your Canadian food story and you will be able to access and get a copy of it. And Nikki, I thank you for your time today. Um, definitely going to everyone you're going to be able to find links uh, about uh, where to go and and find uh, Nikki and and more of her passions and her professions I will put the around the video in this uh, web page so you'll be able to easily access and get to know Nikki a little bit more 
So thank you, Nikki, for sharing a little bit about yourself and being part of this um, meeting today. Anything else you'd like to share? No, thank you very much for having me. I'm so grateful to be a part of the book. I'm so grateful to have that in there. Super. Thank you so much. And again, everyone, uh, keep coming back to this website. You're going to be seeing more and more videos. Content will be uh, always as much as possible um, updated. So it will be a place you want to keep going back to and share with your friends as well. So we say bye for now. Bye for now from Nikki and myself. And you have a really good rest of the day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.